The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they are what defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Again, welcome. It is good to worship together this week. These these days, worship services serve as a kind of solid stepping stone we can rely on as we make our way through an uncertain time. We're like the Israelites in the wilderness, not sure how long we will be there or exactly where we are going. I wonder how you are all doing at this point. Are you just plain weary, frustrated, maybe fed up and angry, feeling on edge much of the time? In a conversation with our bishop this week, he talked about how in terms of COVID-19, the media adds to all of this as every movement regarding the virus is reported out to us so that we remain hyper-focused on it, reacting to every new piece of information, our nerves frayed, our anxiety heightened. If that sounds like you, find a way to shut it off for a while. Not that you ignore it, or do not take it seriously, or fail to stay current as far as guidelines and best practices, but that you make space for moments apart from it, too. Turn off the TV, unplug from social media, read a book, take a walk, play with a dog, do a project. One mental health strategy is to create and follow a regular schedule that ensures that you take breaks, but also that the important things keep happening, like eating and sleeping and tending to relationships of meaning. Such a schedule serves as a kind of structure of intentionality. How do I make sure to do what I need to do for others and for self? and keep on doing so for however long we are in this wilderness time. How did God take care of the Israelites in the wilderness? One of the ways God took care of them was to provide for their basic needs. Our gospel texts for the last few Sundays made mention of the food, the manna, that God gave them to eat there. But God did something else as well, something that would be important to their ongoing life as well as to ours, Through Moses, God gave them the Ten Commandments, the centerpiece of the law of Moses, which served as a kind of moral infrastructure for their life together. For when followed, the commandments enable us to live together in ways that uphold the safety and integrity of individual as well as communal life. What do those commandments include? Deference and gratitude toward the one who has given us life in the first place honesty in our dealings, integrity in our relationships, respect for those who shoulder the responsibilities of leadership, and safeguarding the physical and emotional safety, property, relationships of allegiance, and even good name of the neighbor, so that we do not harm them in any way. It's all pretty important, isn't it? Just as important now as at any other time. In today's reading from Deuteronomy, the people are urged to live according to the law of Moses, again with the Ten Commandments as its center. And they're to make sure to teach those laws and the values that undergird them to their children and grandchildren. Why? Because God 
cares about them, and God wants it to go well for all of them. We continue to do as God desires. We learn the commandments, and we seek to live according to them, so that we and others will enjoy the blessings of the life they are meant to promote and safeguard. And we teach them to our children and grandchildren at home and here at church, so that subsequent generations will be blessed by them as well. It's important to remember that positive, ongoing place of the law of God in our lives when we hear Jesus' words in Mark's Gospel. For Jesus says nothing here to change or challenge what Deuteronomy encourages. What Jesus is talking about with the Pharisees is not the law of Moses in Scripture, but additional teachings or traditions, including regarding dietary practices that had been established and observed among many Jews, perhaps most zealously by the Pharisees themselves. We often see Jesus butting heads with the Pharisees in the Gospels, including in our text today. Why? One, because they placed these traditions on the same level as the law of Moses. As Jesus tells them in today's exchange, you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Two, in their zealousness, they were so focused on the letter of the law that they often missed the point as far as the spirit of the law, that is, the value the law was intended to uphold. Three, they turned the law into a weapon to use against others so that it did harm to rather than build up individual and community life. And four, in doing so, their own hypocrisy was exposed. Jesus clashes with the Pharisees because he's not as concerned with observing their traditions as he is with doing ministry. Not as worried about the letter of the law as he is with fulfilling the spirit or better yet the heart of the law, which is love of God and neighbor. And so in Mark's gospel, he heals on the Sabbath. He touches a leper and a corpse and allows a woman with a hemorrhage to touch him, all of which, of course, were forbidden. And he shares the company of and eats with reviled tax collectors and notorious sinners. It drove the Pharisees crazy. But the problem was not with Jesus. The problem was with the Pharisees. They were so concerned with being able to say they were right and faithful that they tried to squeeze all of life into a set of simple steps to follow, to to simplify what was much more complicated, to to flatten out what was multidimensional. And it just doesn't work for the Pharisees, for us, or for anyone else for that matter. That might be especially important to remember as we continue to journey in the wilderness through this pandemic time to wherever it is we are headed. Some have referred to the place we are in as liminal space. The space between where we have been and where we are going with a destination as yet unknown to us. And as we are experiencing, there's nothing simple about it. There are no obvious answers and there are no defined steps to follow. There's no quick and easy path out of that kind of space. Rather, we need to keep working to find our way through it one step at a time. And maybe like a kid's maze, we go one way only to discover it leads nowhere, so we've got to back up and try another path. Though we travel without a road map, I'm confident we will find our way as long as we do not forget who we are. And who we are is less defined by the specific specifics of what we do than why we do it, the values underneath, the spirit or heart of what we are about. It can be summed up the same way Jesus sums up the commandments, love of God and neighbor. Just because it can be summed up doesn't mean it's simple. It is anything but. It's as complicated and as challenging as life itself. To live it out is to weigh competing values and then pray that what we end up deciding to do is the most loving thing and will do the least amount of harm. It's much more messy than the kind of life the Pharisees were seeking. But as Jesus reminds them over and over again, what they were seeking does not exist. What we have instead is life with God and with one another that depends on us working to figure it out. We know the kinds of things we are to do, but none of the specifics. Guidance, yes, but answers, no. And so we move forward, hoping that we are moving in the right direction, grateful that there is also forgiveness which God gives in abundance. 
and knowing that if we need to back up and try another way, it's okay. Our God is all about second chances too. And so hang in there. You're in good company. We're all trying to find our way through this. Let us support one another as we do so. And let us never forget who we are. We are those created and loved by God and called into a life of goodness and purpose. There may be no roadmap to follow, but we do have a Savior who leads the way. Let us be faithful in following, each one of us and all of us together. Amen.